Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass on this, as we said, the Feast of the Apparition of St. Michael. Uh, this uh, occurred in 492 AD in the Kingdom of Naples at Monte Gargano uh, to uh, a, a shepherd, um, well, not quite to the shepherd, but to the local bishop. What happened was that a herdsman called, uh, strangely enough, Gargano, uh, had uh, lost a bull uh, and went in search of it and could hear that it had uh, trapped itself perhaps in a cave underneath the mountain. Unfortunately uh, there was some disturbance which uh, prevented from Garno uh, the courage to enter into the cave and so he shot an arrow into it I suppose for fear that there might be uh, a bear or some other beast there. However, the arrow mysteriously came straight back out of the cave and uh, wounded him. This, of course, naturally, as it would, spooked him. And so he went to the town and uh, word reached the bishop, who then suggested that a three-day fast uh, occur uh, while they prayed uh, to determine uh, what had happened. It was after this fasting that an apparition, an appearance of St Michael the Archangel was given to the bishop who explained to him that the cave at the mount had been secured uh, for a place of worship and sanctuary. And sure enough, when the bishop and his retinue arrived at the cave and entered it, they found there uh, a church with all the accoutrements necessary to offer the divine liturgy which they then promptly did. The Holy Mother Church gives us this feast today as a reminder of that angelic assistance, that heavenly aid that we, my brothers and sisters, ourselves may avail ourselves of at any time. For remember those words at the end of the Gospel. I tell you, says Jesus, they have angels of their own in heaven that behold the face of my heavenly Father continually. This, of course, has often been taken to refer to our uh, 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 guardian angels. The suggestion is that each and every one of us, when we were born, were assigned a heavenly companion, an angelic friend, who would serve by uh, trying to defend us and protect us, and indeed perhaps sometimes cajole and encourage us. As we've reflected before, you may be familiar with uh, a, a sort of traditional depiction of a guardian angel often sat upon or hovering by one's right shoulder and on the left shoulder is often depicted uh, in cartoons and art a little devil or a little demon and this is why whenever you spill salt uh, is the the tradition is of course to uh, gather some of the salt and flick it over your left shoulder to blind the uh, demon or the little devil uh, that is hovering there. Now of course that has that imagery uh, has of course been perhaps uh, rightfully uh, uh, castigated in uh, cartoons uh, even I think making an appearance in a Tom and Jerry uh, episode uh, but it does depict it does describe for us that continual battle that is going on for the salvation of our souls. That on the one part of course is the side of the angels and on the other part the side of the devil. And certainly while we may, we may not see ourselves uh, a guardian angel on our right shoulder or a little demon on our left, nonetheless we can certainly feel sometimes their influence and their presence. Sometimes when we have uh, experienced particularly uh, 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 moments of uh, deep spirituality or of the presence of God we might say perhaps that has been due to the influence of our guardian angel and other times too no doubt we have been aware of the presence of evil or the influence of evil in a given place or situation 
certainly my brothers and sisters, what we should not be blind to is the fact that there is a great spiritual battle going on for our souls. God's will, of course, is that each and every one of us should know him, love him, serve him, and be with him in this life and in the next. Conversely, then, it is the aim of the devil to prevent as many souls from fulfilling God's will. Within ourselves, of course, we experience this spiritual battle in the dichotomy that exists within us that St. Paul puts so well elsewhere. Sometimes I cannot do right for doing wrong, and sometimes I can only do wrong when I mean to do right. We are aware within ourselves of our concupiscence, of our persuasion to sin and selfishness. We are more or less, my brothers and sisters, unless uh, we are experiencing some uh, mental aberration or uh, health issue, uh, we generally are able within ourselves innately to sense what is right or what is wrong. Even as children, uh, we begin to be able to discern what is right and what is wrong. We, as children, test our parents, sometimes the limitations of our parents. But we are all the time checking, as it were, to, to uh, uh, confirm what our innate sensibility, uh, conscience-wise, of morality t is telling us. And this goes on throughout our lives. Often we don't need to be told that something is wrong. It can feel wrong. It doesn't feel right. Sometimes we know, we just have a sense that we shouldn't do something, or we shouldn't go somewhere, or we shouldn't be in a place, or we shouldn't have touched a thing. We generally have that uh, ability. Now we would say, and the spiritual mystics of course will tell us, that uh, that is our conscience, that is our soul, and especially when it is uh, properly united and working, we might say, in tandem with our uh, spirit, uh, which is of God, which enables us then to discern spiritual things, and at the same time, hopefully, it is working in connection with our body. Remember, we are body, mind, and spirit, or body, soul, and spirit, and the idea is for all three parts of ourselves to be working in union and harmony together. This is how we achieve the balance uh, and uh, restoration and reconciliation in our lives as Christians to live a holy life as befits citizens of heaven and children of God. We as Christians are striving to uh, manifest the wholeness of the person, the wholeness of the creation of humanity that is contained within each and every one of us, of body, soul, and spirit. The spirit, of course, enables us to discern spiritual things. It enables us to connect with God and to be aware of other ungodly things. The soul, of course, is uniquely connected to our spirit, but also, too, to our body. Our soul, of course, learns through the experience of the senses, through the knowledge gained from the experience of living in our bodies. The ideal, of course, is for these three things to cooperate together in harmony, thus enabling us to be the whole person that God desires us to be. All of which, of course, will be ultimately realized in the next life with our incorruptible uh, body rather than with our body, which currently, of course, is so uh, predicated toward uh, uh, sensuous pleasure. It is this that our souls and our spirit continually are checking, and are thus, and this is how we feel the dichotomy that is within us between right and wrong, between good and evil, between self and selflessness, between sin and sacrificial love. This feast, then, is given to remind us of the presence of the angels. For the uh, city uh, near Monte Gargano, it became, for them, of course, uh, a place of great pilgrimage. Indeed, you can still visit uh, the cave. You can see uh, the exquisitely carved uh, Alto and Riridos and, uh, and be amazed 
at what had been provided by heaven as a sanctuary to honor the angels and archangels, the thrones, the principalities, the dominions, the seraphim and the cherubim, all of which remind us not just of that heavenly assistance and guidance which is provided and afforded to us of God's love and mercy, but also to, of course, of our vocation, which is similar to that of the angels, to offer perpetual worship and adoration of God. This, of course, is the complete purpose of our lives, ultimately, to live in sacrificial love with God, expressed through worship and adoration of Him, who is our life, of Him who has given us our being, of Him who created us, out of his love and desires us to live in love by return. There are some, of course, uh, mystics, saints uh, through the centuries who were blessed also to see their guardian angels. St. Francis of Rome, for example, was uh, gifted to be able to see uh, her guardian archangel. But this is not something that is generally given for uh, most people. But as I say, we can be aware, if we are ourselves aware, if we are spiritually aware, of their presence and of their influence. And certainly, my brothers and sisters, we should strive to remember, especially in our darkest hours, especially in our des most desperate times, particularly when we are feeling lonely or afraid, we should recall this assignation of a heavenly companion to each and every one of us that we are never truly alone as children of God. For not only are we always accompanied by the prayers and intercessions of the saints, of those who have gone before us, and of the church militant on earth, the prayers of those whom we ask to pray for us around us, but also, too, uh, we promise the assistance and heavenly companionship of our guardian angel, and of course, we have only to ask the Lord and we will receive. Thus, just as we have reflected recently about our attitude toward death, which should not be one of fear, but rather of hope, so too may we live our lives on a daily basis, again, without the need of fear, but rather of comfort and consolation, knowing that despite everything that we may have to endure in this life, we do so, never alone, but always accompanied by a representative of heaven. Just as we, my brothers and sisters, in turn, are called to be representatives ourselves of the kingdom of God in us, to the world around us. Remember that we are said in some respects to be higher than the angels in the sense that we have been given this corporeal existence which they have not. And we are charged, each and every one of us, as it were, a standing order to proclaim the gospel, to be ourselves ambassadors of Christ, as the Apostle elsewhere says, to be heralds of the coming of the kingdom of God and of the second coming of our Saviour after the manner of St John the Baptist. It is our voices that should be calling out in the spiritual wilderness of the earth, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, repent and believe, come and see, and realise for yourself the strength and the comfort and the consolation that we have for our Christian hope, for which, of course, we are continually asked to be prepared to give an account, as the great chief, past, uh, uh, great chief apostle Peter commends us in his epistles. Let us then, my brothers and sisters, take heart today from the assurance of the promise of this divine assignation of a heavenly companion to comfort us, console us, guide us and lead us toward our heavenly home with him, who is God, Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Amen.